Hello everyone. Welcome to the module on the nervous system. In this module, we will talk about two important anatomical structures of brain and its functions that is thalamus and hypothalamus. Okay. Now, starting with hypothalamus, hypothalamus is the primary organ which maintains homeostasis by regulating thirst, water balance, controlling the adenohypophysis that is the anterior pituitary and the neurohypophysis which is the posterior pituitary by release of hormones produced in the hypothalamus okay it also regulates hunger autonomic nervous system temperature and sexual urges okay so remember it by t a n h a t s that means tan hats which stands for thirst adenohypophysis neurohypophysis then there is hunger followed by autonomic nervous system temperature and sexual activity am i clear so this is what the hypothalamus majorly takes care of and there are various inputs nuclei and outputs in the hypothalamus is it clear now the inputs are areas not protected by blood brain barrier okay so the signals coming to the hypothalamus are through positions or through the locations where there is absence of blood brain barrier now there is also ovlt that senses the change in osmolarity then there is area postrema with sound which is found in the dorsal medulla and it responds to emetemix that means it is a vomiting center so there are two major areas which is not protect protected by the blood brain barrier which is ovlt and the area postrema am i clear so this is overall function of hypothalamus now talking about specific functions the first nucleus that is the lateral nucleus is a place in the hypothalamus which controls hunger okay so whenever there is a destruction of lateral nucleus a person feels anorexic there is a failure to thrive in infants and it is stimulated by ghrelin and inhibited by leptin so stimulated by ghrelin and inhibited by leptin is this clear now destruction would obviously lead to anorexia and failure to thrive in infants so please remember lateral nucleus injury makes you lean okay so if there is a destruction of the lateral nucleus you won't eat much and there would be less energy and hence it can't thrive in infants am i clear Now talking about the second nucleus that is the ventromedial nucleus which is responsible for satiety now if a person's ventral medial nucleus is destroyed then there can be hyperphagia now ventral nu ventromedial nucleus is usually destroyed in craniopharyngioma okay now this is the opposite of lateral nucleus and hence it is stimulated by leptin and if there is a destruction to ventromedial nucleus it will make you very massive am i clear now talking about the anterior nucleus which is responsible for cooling or parasympathetic stimulation whereas the posterior nucleus which is responsible for heating or sympathetic system Okay, so lateral nucleus for hunger, ventromedial nucleus for satiety, anterior nucleus for cooling that is parasympathetic system, and posterior nucleus for heating which is the sympathetic system. Am I clear? Now talking about the other nucleus that is suprachiasmatic nucleus. I've already discussed suprachiasmatic nucleus in great depth in sleep physiology module, so please check that out. so suprachiasmatic nucleus is responsible for circadian rhythm which is in turn responsible for sleep cycle okay we're talking about the two important nuclei that is supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus that is responsible for production of hormones released by the posterior pituitary 
okay so it synthesizes adh and oxytocin is this clear so it synthesizes adh and it also synthesizes oxytocin now adh and oxytocin are carried by the neurohypophysins down the axons to the posterior pituitary so i told you supra optic and paraventricular nucleus are responsible for production of hormones and release via the posterior pituitary am i clear now talking about the last important nucleus of hypothalamus that is the preoptic nucleus preoptic nucleus is responsible for thermoregulation sexual behavior and is controlled by GnRs that is gonadotropin releasing hormone okay so gonadotropin releasing hormone is released by the preoptic nucleus of the hypothalamus which is responsible for thermoregulation and sexual behavior so if there is a failure of gnrh producing neurons to migrate from the olfactory pit okay it can lead to a syndrome called as kalman syndrome am i clear so kalman syndrome is when there is failure of gnrh producing neurons to migrate from the olfactory pit so this is all about hypothalamus now let us talk about thalamus there are five major nuclei in thalamus that is the ventral posterior lateral nucleus also abbreviated as vpl ventro posterior medial nucleus that is vpm then there is lateral genicular nucleus medial genicular nucleus and ventral lateral nucleus now talking about ventral posterior lateral nucleus all the inputs are from the spinothalamic and the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway that is the ascending tracks okay see all the ascending tracks are input to vpl with senses different sensations like vibration pain pressure proprioception light touch and temperature now from the ventral posterior nu posterior lateral nucleus the destination is primary somatosensory cortex okay so these fibers first come to the vpl which is the relay center and from here it goes to the primary somatosensory cortex am i clear now talking about ventral posterior medial nucleus okay now in ventral posterior medial nucleus it is majorly due to trigeminal and gustatory pathway so if the sensations coming from trigeminal or gustatory pathway comes to the thalamus it is relayed in the vpm in majorly carries face sensation that is of trigeminal and taste which is of gustatory pathway now the destination is again the primary somatosensory cortex am i clear so are we clear with vpl and vpm now talking about lateral genicular nucleus and medial genicular nucleus the lateral genicular nucleus is a important part in the visual pathway okay and the inputs are from cranial nerve 2 optic chiasma and the optic tract and appear and since it is from the cranial nerve 2 optic chiasma and optic tract it is usually responsible for vision now these inputs are relayed in the lateral genicular nucleus and then the destination or they are sent to the primary visual cortex that is in the calcarine sulcus we'll talk more about calcarine sulcus primary somatosensory areas when we talk more about cerebral cortex and its different regions but just remember for now that the destination of lateral genicular nucleus is primary visual cortex now talking about the medial genicular nucleus medial genicular nucleus the input is from the superior olive and the inferior colliculus of tectum okay so the input or the signals come from the superior olive and the inferior colliculus of the tectum which is responsible for sensations of hearing and the destination apparently becomes auditory cortex of the temporal lobe since it is the hearing pathway am i clear 
Now, talking about the last nucleus, that is the ventral lateral nucleus, the inputs are from the cerebellum and the basal ganglia. So, remember that the inputs are from the cerebellum and the basal ganglia, which carries motor sensations and hence the destination is motor cortex. So, these are the five important nucleus of the thalamus and here we have completed hypothalamus and thalamus and its various functions and nuclei. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.